So short and open circuits, it's important to know the difference. Anybody feel like telling me the difference between a short and an open circuit? Anyone? Sure. Go ahead, Sam. A short is the path that's not supposed to be there. Okay. And an open, well, an open is no path. An open is no path. Well. So. so the way I always say it, which is, I don't know if anybody likes this or not, it doesn't seem to go over very well, but a short is when something is happening that should not be happening, and an open is something is not happening that should be happening. Say that again. An open is something is not happening that should be happening. You walk in, you flip on the light switch, and the lights don't come on, right? Breakers on, lights aren't on. That's an open. Something happening that should not be happening would be you turn on your thermostat for cooling and the heat comes on also. That's a short. Something's happening that should not be happening. Or you flip the switch on and the breaker trips. That's something happening that should not be happening. That's a short. Most cases, electricians, when they talk about shorts, they're talking about an undesigned no-load path or an undesigned low-resistance path. So the obvious one would be, you know, like the chair we drew before here or, or any, anything that connects these two halves. That's an obvious traditional short. It's a path that has no load in it or low resistance. That's a short. But we also know that there's shorts that we see on the load side of switches. Thermostat's a switch, right? You guys all know that. It's primarily a switch. It has a load in it too as well for the microprocessor. And that's why you have power in common is because it's doing some work in there. But primarily it's a switch. It's there to open and close switches, make and break paths, right? And so the line side of a thermostat, what terminal is the line side of a thermostat? This is a pretty old school thermostat. What terminal is the line side of a thermostat? Hmm? R. R. Right. R is the line side. That is the feeding power into the thermostat. I'm too weak to get that open. So this is our R terminal right here. What are some of the load sides of the thermostat? Y, G, W, O. There's a lot of different load sides because that's going out to the loads, right? What happens if two of those load sides touch each other? Let's say Y touches W. What happens? It's a short, but does it blow a fuse? If Y touches W? No. It doesn't, it doesn't blow a fuse. It doesn't create high current. It's not a no load path. It's an undesigned path between two load side circuits. So that results in the heat running with the air. Right, and the air running with the heat, both. You're mixing load side circuits. We also call that a short. There's nothing else to call it. I don't know what else to call it. So we call it a short, right? So it's something is happening that shouldn't be happening. The heat's running with the air. The fuse is blowing. The breaker's tripping. Those are all shorts. An open is there is no path at all. So walk up to a motor. Power is applied. To, uh, I'd say. Here we got 240 volts applied to the motor and it's not running. Is that an open or a short? That's an open. Walk up to a condenser, breakers trip, reset the breaker, breaker trips again. Is that a short or an open? That's a short. All right. Now that's not how you should do that. You shouldn't just walk up and reset breakers. But oh, just as an aside, what should you do if you walk up to a system that has a trip breaker? Now I, I know that that's what most of you do. But that's not what you should do. You should do a visual, a full visual inspection of that piece of equipment before you reset that breaker. Because let's say that it, that it arced out. This ha has happened where it's a, a high voltage line that's arced out against the discharge line. But it hasn't blown through it yet. And now you go and you reset it and it finally does the job and blows through the discharge line and loses all the charge. That's happened. It's rare, but it's happened. Or if it's inside the electrical cabinet and it's a rat's nest and a wire came loose and now every time you reset that breaker, you're causing a big arc flash. Not only is it not safe for you, it's not good for the equipment. So whenever you find a trip breaker or a blown fuse, you should always do a visual inspection before you just reset. Always. Follow me? Everybody buy? You guys buy what I'm selling here? Catch what I'm, catch what I'm pitching? You know, you're not buying it? You just reset it? Yeah, okay. All right. So... Knowing the difference between a short and an open is a really key language 
it's a really key a descriptor when you're talking to a, a senior technician or you're talking to somebody to say, I have a short or I have a shorted compressor. A shorted compressor and an open compressor are different, which is why one of my questions on my, my application for new technicians is, you have a shorted compressor, when you walk up to the system, what will, be, what will have happened? And a lot of them will say, the unit won't run. Well, that may be technically correct, but the unit won't run because the breaker's tripped. If you have a shorted compressor and you walk up to the equipment, the breaker's going to be tripped. If you have a compressor that's out on thermal overload and you walk up to the unit, what will happen? Uh, only the fan is going to Just the fan's going to run. Fan. Right. Right. The breaker's not going to be tripped. No. Thermal overload does not result in a breaker trip. So, you know, and, and we see guys do this from time to time. You walk up and they're, they're, they got a hose on the compressor. What are you doing? Well, you know, it's, it's, I think it's shorted. I'm trying to reset it. And it's like, no, open overload results in an open circuit compressor not running, but not resulting in a breaker tripping. So a, a shorted compressor won't trip the breaker all the time. Okay, describe that one. Well, if there's grounds not connected on there, we're not connected properly back to the Okay, all right, very sneaky. Yep, yeah, good point, good point, because because the ground, that safety circuit, is the ground fault path. So that's why we connect a ground, is to create a path back to the panel, so that way when there is a short, we create a ground fault. There's a path, and that ground fault trips a breaker. Good point, though. Sometimes the breaker itself is no good. Can be, can be. Um, you know, the breakers being no good are like fuses blowing for no reason. It Does it happen? Yes. It's exceptionally rare, though. Now, usually when a breaker does fail, and we see this a lot in, um, uh, in pool heaters for property managers. We see this all the time. And the reason is is because they use that breaker as a disconnect. They're constantly turning it on and off. And over time, the breaker becomes open. It's not making contact. And it will usually stop making contact only on one leg, which gets back to this whole confusing situation where technicians call us. And they, they're looking at a breaker here. We're going to make this a... Uh, I don't know what kind of breaker this would be. Well, we'll just make it a contactor. It's a brine breaker. A what? It's a brine breaker. It's a brine breaker, yeah. And they'll take a contactor, and they has got L1 and L2 going into it. L1, L2, right? And they'll go, I have 120 volts there. Actually, no, sorry. I'm doing this wrong, because that, that wouldn't. Single pull breaker. I got 120 volts there. I got 120 volts there. I got it. Breaker's good. And then we, what do we always say, Jesse? Check for 240. Do you have 240 volts there? No, I don't have 240 volts there. Okay. The reason why you're reading 120 volts is because it's one leg of power that's feeding through the compressor and the load and then coming back the other side. That doesn't mean that you have power. That doesn't mean that you have 240 volts applied. You've always got to check, and, and generally you're doing it at the breaker. They'll take one side to ground, other side to ground, and they'll read 120 volts on both sides and think that the breaker's good, when in fact you have to read 240 volts coming into the breaker, 240 volts coming out of the breaker. That's how you know you have a good breaker. If you have 240 volts going into the breaker and you don't have 240 volts coming out of the breaker, you don't have a good breaker.